Welcome back to Organize with Grace podcast. If you're ready to declutter your life and home so that you can make room for peace in your heart, you're in the right place. Join me, Grace Ramon, your host and home organizer, where I and my guests share tips and encouragement to help you get started, especially when you don't know where to start. I'm here with you as you begin your decluttering journey, so let's get going. You ready? And I am thrilled to talk with and introduce to you Hale Shoa. Hale is the founder and CEO of Picturely, a photo organization, curation, archiving, and design studio that helps families, individuals, and businesses transform their chaotic mess of photos into one clear and cohesive library. Holly and her team meticulously organized their clients' photo collections into a searchable, secure, and easily shareable photo archive. Holly believes that family histories and personal memories are some of the most valuable treasures that exist, and that preserving and sharing them is crucial for future generations. Holly, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, I love hearing personal stories, and so does the Organizer with Grace community. So please, can you tell us what Picturely is? And I did a little bit of an intro before this, but I would love to hear it from you, what it is and why you felt passionate about bringing it into the world. Yeah, Picturely is a photo organization, curation, archiving, and design studio because we do all of that. We organize family collections, we curate them because we all have a lot of stuff that we may not necessarily want to archive or keep, both digital and analog. Um, We archive the analog, we archive the digital to make sure it's backed up properly, And, uh, of course, we make sure that we come up with ways for our clients to be able to enjoy that. And that's the design part, whether it's photo books, websites, um, montages, you name it. So, yeah, we are a full 360 agency. We manage everything soup to nuts. And it's been such an amazing journey. Um, I'm glad that you're asking me how it all started because... um, well, the, the idea of archiving my own family stories came about when my family left Iran when during the Iranian Revolution in 1979. And as one can imagine, during your revolution, you just have to kind of pack up your stuff and leave right away. You don't really have a lot of time to ponder or even declutter, really. So my mom, um, in her wisdom, decided to make she made sure that all the family heirlooms and albums which weren't a lot, but, you know, that she, she would save that and bring that to, uh, United States. And so about a decade and a half later, I was working in advertising and I had access to a lot of high resolution scanners and I would bring my family photos in uh, during off hours. And I start scanning my, my items. And I had, I have family in four continents and, I would email it to them and they would be like, oh, my God, where did you get all this? <laughs> so that was like sort of the seed of how important archiving is. Um, and also really got me to start asking questions about who some of the people were in the in the photos. Because if, you know, my father or my mom, if they were to pass, then I wouldn't have access to that. Right. So true. So important to take care of this while you're still uh, engaged, you know, and still, um, healthy enough to be able to talk about it. And, you know, and you still have access to extended family. If say you don't have access to your parents, you have access to your cousins or aunts and uncles or whoever that may be to answer those questions. So that was the archiving part. And then at the same time, I started investing in a camera And even though I'm not a photographer, I do love taking photos and I would start taking photos. I never had kids, uh, but all my friends would have kids and I started doing photo shoots with our kids and I started making photo albums and organizing all those photos. And 
it would just bring so much joy to everyone. Like I do a, a calendar every year and, and I still do actually. And um, so that led me to really learn about digital organization. And so when I started to think about what kind of business I want to do, I basically dug deep and I thought, you know what, honestly, the biggest joy in life for me is to do photo books. And that's when it I st- began picturely in 2016 with the idea of doing photo books for families and just um, institutions even. We have a lot of um, institutional clients as well that want to archive their their items. And, um, and that's where it started. But um, so the, and, and the difficulty was when we did, you know, it's, it's, it's easy enough to say, oh, I'm just going to do a photo book. But then when we dug a little deeper, we realized people really need help with decluttering their digital, and as well as their analog stuff, like, they don't even know where to start, right? They could say, well, can we include that one photo of me when I was a kid? And I think that's on an external hard drive, or maybe it's on my old computer, or maybe it's on Dropbox, you know? (laughs) Yes. And and that's when I was like, oh, this is a lot deeper than just doing a photo book. (laughs) Holly, can I just say that um, you are probably a dream come true to many people that are like listening right now because they're like, oh, that's me. I'm like wondering where. Where my pictures are, and I need I need help. I need help decluttering. So, so yeah. Thank you for you know. Just I feel like you have really followed your heart and followed your family history and and making this into a business and and giving like you said people joy when when all of it is put together. You know, so that is so neat, and that brings us to our topic, which is seven steps to removing the chaos from your photo organizing project. Holly, help. So that's my cry. Uh, um, If, if no one wants to, you know, say that out loud, I'll do that for, for the rest of our people. Exactly. So I've actually, I've actually designed a, a, a giveaway for anyone who signs up, which we'll talk about at the end of the podcast. But awesome. if uh, if they want to sign up to receive it for the, themselves, I can just touch upon some of the things that I cover in this giveaway. Um, you know, starting any or- quota organization process really starts with a goal. Like you need to have a goal in mind and what your vision is for the end of it. Is it to downsize? So it could just be that you're going to go through all the albums and just take out the things that you want out of the albums so that you can just put them in in archival boxes and you are able to throw away the albums and the photos that you may not necessarily want to keep. I know a lot of people have anxiety over the idea of throwing away photos, but I also know that a lot of my clients who inherit photos from their parents may not necessarily want to keep everything that was part of their parents' life, right? So they may not necessarily want to keep their parents' trip to Hawaii because um, it was their journey, right? It was their, it, I'm sure they want to keep the photos that their parents were in, but all the photos of the waterfalls and the ocean and the mountains, you know, no one's going to want to keep that or archive that. So right. have a goal in mind. Um, so, and then, you know, the next step of, of any. So that would be step one, right? Goal is like, so. Yeah, just, just decide crucial. on a goal. Like, do you want yeah. to archive it? If you want to archive it, you have to follow certain steps to make sure that you're capturing the the information in the photos. Um, and then, of course, a, a goal for digital is, you know, um, learning. Uh, figuring out where all your stuff is you know so we have things that are trapped in snapfish shutterfly all the different platforms um and those are all very technical ways of getting them out of those platforms i call shutterfly the jail of photos (laughs) (laughs) they they present your photos is really really difficult to get those photos out of there (laughs) oh good tip yes um but yeah. And then, and then in our business or any sort of organization, and just like home organizing too, 
you need to gather everything in one place, right? So for example, if you're going through a closet, you need to make sure that you're gathering all the the clothes to make sure what you want to keep, what you want to donate versus what you want to put back in the closet. It's the same concept for photos. You gather everything in one place if you can. I mean, do we have clients who call us and say, hey, I found another box all the time. (laughs) Um, But, you know, you want to gather everything just so you can even see the amount of things that you have. I know it's overwhelming, but it's, it's the best place to start. And, you know, you want to make sure that you have the right tools, which we cover in, in the um, in the giveaway. Um, is we have a full list of tools that we have. And um, and then that's when you start sorting and organizing. And it all depends on how you want to enjoy your photos. We sort everything chronologically. We start every single client project with a family chart. We want to gather yes. names. Uh, maiden names, birthdays, date of passings, weddings, anniversaries, whatever it is that gives significance that will help us not only organize it, but also to memorialize those events and those people in the photos. And the way we do that is we rename and redate all the files in our studio. That's what we do when we scan um, a family collection. Because to me, it's really important to have a sortable and searchable library. And um, and that's where all the technology and things like that come into play. And of course, once you're done with sorting everything, then that's when you want to either scan your photos or have a company like ours or someone locally scan your photos. Um, and a tip for that is making sure that they do give you the option of being able to rename and redate the files. Because if you give them a thousand photos and then you get a thousand images back that are called IMG 234, <laughs> that can become really overwhelming. For so, sure. That's how so, it looks like right now for me. Yeah. Ah, did I just, you know, reveal something of a, you know, disorganized self here? <laughs> I'm listening. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. So Holly, so do you feel like, um, you know, the, this quandary can be solved just simply, you found that chronologically, you know, putting them in order is the most like effective, you know, way of, um, putting your photos together. Yeah. A lot of times. And even I, before I became a professional certified photo organizer, and yes, there is such a thing. I am certified. I do follow a certain rule of ethic. And I have taught myself hundreds and hundreds of hours of technology and workflows and all that to be able to do this business. Um, you know, I started to do it by, let's say I have three siblings. I was like, okay, I'm going to put all my brother's photos in here. And, you know, the first sibling is easy. But uh-huh. then you get into the second sibling. And the first sibling is in all the photos of the second sibling. Oh, right. (laughs) You know what I mean? So then you're like, wait, what do I do? Which pile do I put this in? You know, so a lot of people do it, uh, start doing it by person. And then it becomes overwhelming because because of that, because you never have photos. You rarely have photos of just that one person in it. Of course, school photos. Yes. But otherwise, you know, if you have a family and if you have an extended family and you see them all the time, all, all my aunts and uncles and cousins are all in my photos. And so it's it's really hard to do it by person. Yeah, yeah. So chronologically does turn out to be the best way. And you don't have to, you know, I say, I always say perfection is the enemy of progress. You don't have to be perfect. For sure. You yeah. just have to say, I think this was in the 90s because I look like I'm five, you know, and I was born in 1990 or whatever that is. You know, it could be in the 50s and you could just put it in decades. And that way... When uh, you scan it yourself, have it done, you know, when you're getting it back, you know, that these particular photos belong to that decade or to that year. We have clients who want us to get super specific uh, in terms of like 1963 Christmas or just say early 60s. So it just it all depends on, again, the goal. Right. What is the goal? Um, So. And and of course, with every project, we want to make sure that we highly encourage all listeners to invest in proper storage solutions, whether that is for your digital, to get at least uh, two really good hard drives 
um, or archival boxes for your photos. And that can be found, you know, all over the map. Amazon has really good options. We would love to work with a company called Archival Methods, which I'll give you the link and you can put it in the show notes. Um, but a uh, proper storage solution is really, really, it's really, really important. And of course, digital backup. You know, the thing is, yes, we could have a flood or fire that can, of course, destroy our analog memories, but that's yeah. much more rare than a hard drive or a computer dying and those things are not backed up. Oh, or wow. your phone yeah. is not backed up and you drop it and you lose all your phone photos. So digital photos are actually a lot more at a lot more risk of getting lost. So make sure that your digital life is properly backed up. Oh, that's that's really, really good. You're, it, it's so true. And we don't, you know, we think a lot about our, I mean, I'm going to totally date myself, which I don't care, you know, about our, you know, analog photos getting lost. But you're right. Like, I mean, it, digital can go in a snap. Yeah. Right? Digital, Without, you know, uh, yeah. yeah. I had a client who didn't know, um, actually, a lot of people don't know the difference between backup and sync. And I do want to touch upon that. Yes, please. So a sync is a, think of sync as a two-way highway, right? So if you take a photo and it's synced to the cloud, that means it's going to push it to the cloud, whatever your cloud is, whether it's Dropbox, Google, Apple, whatever that is. And so if you delete it from that device, whether it is on the computer or on your phone, it deletes it everywhere. Why? Because it's a two-way highway. It's a sync. Yep. It's not a backup. A lot of people think, well, my photos are in the cloud, so it's backed up. It is backed up. If you do lose your phone, your photos are safely still there because just because you lost your phone or because your phone cracks and you don't have access to it, your photos have synced to that cloud. So it's still there. However, if something happens to that cloud or if they decide that they don't want to offer that anymore, right? They don't want to offer that service anymore, like Costco photos. They just said, you know what? We're done. Yep. Or Kodak Gallery back in the early 2000s. They decided, you know what? We're done. We don't want to, we don't want to host people's photos anymore. And that happens all the time. So you just want to make sure that you own your assets, not some company and you uh, uh, are downloading it and backing that up to, uh, we use the three to one method. So, um, so I highly encourage everyone to learn about that. Wow. Yeah. And quickly, um, or however you want to be able to explain it, what is the three to one method, Haley? Or is the that something that's going to be a long time to try to explain? Oh, no, not at all. Yeah. The three to one method is, um, it's, it's a strategy that we use with all of our clients, right? It's basically three copies of, um, separate copies of your data, including the original files. And I actually wrote a blog about this and I can give that to you as well. So, you know, there's different strategies on how to do this. Um, and then two additional copies that are stored elsewhere. So let's say you have two hard drives, you keep one of them at home and one of them at someone else's house or in the bank. Of course, you need to update that every three, four, six, one year even, right? And then one, one copy in the, in the cloud. I highly recommend Backblaze. Um, this is a company that can back up all your photos, including any external hard drives that are attached to your computer. And it does it in the background. And it's it's a wonderful service and it's super secure. And it is a true backup because it's only a one-way highway. It doesn't do the sync thing. It just takes everything from your computer, any external hard drive, all documents, and just backs it up. And I also have a link for that in the in the giveaway when if people want to sign up to get it. Um, so and that's essentially the 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 strategy of three to one. So do two different types of media. It could be on a device or um, or off site or in the cloud. And then always make sure you have one copy off site. Yeah, that is that is awesome. Super secure, making sure that nothing is lost. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so far we've gone through the few steps, like you said, you know, goal, you know, gather um, and, you know, gather them in, in all one place. And I'm going to try to, you know, keep track. And three is to, um, you know, chronologically, right? Is that the third step? So what are the next steps? Um, it's Holly, it's, it's, about, got it's not about, uh, it's about sorting. So yeah, sorting. I, yes. yes. So the idea is about sorting things, right? So yeah. Tell us about us, that. It, it, you know, yeah. you can just put a bunch of sticky notes on a table and go, these are the seventies. These are the eighties. And yeah. then you can go through and go, I want to keep these photos. I don't want to keep those photos. So they, so, the decluttering, um, the deciding part, right? The Depending on what the, exactly. Yeah, exactly. the goal is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. All right. And what, what is the next step? Holly, once you've sorted that and, you know, is that where maybe, um, where does your company come in where like, say someone decided to, let's just say I decided to DIY the whole thing. And then I get stuck. Like, can I contact you at any point in time or how, you know, where does, um, where's your client at like with their photos when they come to you? Like, have they tried to like DIY it and then they get stuck or did they just say, yeah, here's all of it. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, you know, you know honestly, the, 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 um, it's it's actually harder for us to work with people who start a project and and then try to do it themselves and then we have to kind of reverse engineer certain things and I'll explain uh, what that is. Okay. We always start our projects with albums. So whether okay. it was you or your parents or your grandmother, they went through all the photos, they decided these are the best of that are album worthy, right? So they decided to put those photos in an album so those are the best photos so that's when we st and that's the reason why we start with albums and there's also a reason a chronology or an event that has to do with albums you know whether it is an album of that year or it's album of someone's engagement party or birthday or you know we have clients who make an album for each kid uh, of course there's a lot of duplicates in that scenario um but we always start with albums and, and, and this is the way we always learn about the client, our client's cadence, like what they took photos of, who else was in there in the family, um, basically all of that. Right. Um, and then we go to the photos and envelopes and then we go to loose photos, which is, which is the hardest for us to organize. And I'm sure it's the most overwhelming for anyone to organize. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's how we started. And, you know, so, and I encourage people to do the same thing is to start with the things in albums. And, um, so it, it, it just gives you a much better structure to work from essentially. Nice. Nice. And now you've seen lots of accumulation, you know, through collected through generations and, um, and we've talked about where we begin. And I'm so glad, you know, thank you for all of these pointers, because like it really we feel overwhelmed, you know, at the amount of it. But if you were to take it step by step, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, to to try to um, do it this way, how how long um, I guess it depends on the amount. Right. Like how long it would it take you to, you know, put it all together, like if it were. um you know, if a project was given to you, like on, on average. Sure. Um, so it, it, I always say, I, I know, I know it's really hard to say when it depends, it depends. So it depends on the size <laughs> of the project. It depends on the level of chaos. So am I getting five bins that are totally loose from his parents, her parents, their grandparents all like sort of dumped in. Um, so level of chaos. Um, it depends on how organized the client wants it. Do they want it done by year month or do they just want decades or do they want early, mid, late decade? So it, it really, so all of those factors come in into play. Um, and also do they want to do their digital as well? So we always, we encourage all of our clients to start with digital because we can do that much faster and they can see the results and then they can have a peace of mind that, okay, I've gone through all of my hard drives and everything and downloaded all that 
everything's deduplicated. We're good to go. And now we can hit the, the analog stuff at the same time. But um, so anywhere from, I would say the earliest is one month, uh, you know, up to like two to three months. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, it just really depends. And I love earlier how you really, um, I think first for me, at least I'm just, I'm going to speak for myself. Like, I feel like overwhelmed with the photos um, because I'm not thinking about it the way we do decluttering and organizing and you just like helped me to you know turn the light bulb on like oh yeah it's like the same way that you would you know that you would treat um you know physical as in like you know things versus you know the pictures and the you know digital that you know you've you've got to right. have a handle of what your goals are you've got to get a handle of where everything is at and gather them all and so you know thank you for that that was <laughs> that was awesome and <laughs> and with this um, I mean I, after that you know with the sorting you know now what how do we keep up like how do you maintain you know, your, is it, do you suggest like, you know, like you said earlier, updating your digital, like on a, like every year or, you know, how, no, I, how would we. But with digital, uh, uh, I would say with digital, be very cognizant of the amount of photos you're taking. Yeah. Uh, when you're taking a photo, make sure the camera lens this guy over here, all three of them, or one or two or whatever, however many is on your camera, make sure it's clean before you take a photo because you don't want yes. those blurry shots. Just saying, get a lot of them. I'm like, oh, oh, I need to tell, I need to tell this client to clean her camera lens because you know we have makeup on our face. It's and so true. There's yeah. also a camera on the front side of our camera, and this is really dirty all the time because mm -hmm. for sure for the face oils and everything. So, um. But just be cognizant and go through your photos. You know, uh, one of the methods I, I teach people is pick a date. So let's say, let's say on a Sunday morning, you know, you want to devote half an hour, 45 minutes to your photos, right? So just pick a date. Let's say it's June 5th. And so go through the years on June 5th last year, June 5th, the year before, June 5th, all the way to I don't know how over back, far back your camera roll goes. Just go through those photos. Don't overwhelm yourself with any right. more than that. Right. And then in 300 and, uh, you know, and if you do that every day in 365 days in a year, your whole camera roll will be clean. You know, it doesn't take that long. It takes probably half an hour. Um, I say definitely learn the tools that come with your camera. There's a lot of tools on our cameras. For example, on an iPhone, if you go to albums and scroll all the way down, there is such a thing as du du duplication remover. So you can click that and you can trust the, I know for iPhones, you can definitely trust it. You can click on your screenshots and clean your camera roll that way. We take a lot of accidental screenshots. We take a lot of screenshots <laughs> to remember things. We take a yes. lot of screenshots to email to someone else or text to someone else. And so there's definitely ways to clean up your camera roll um, and just be cognizant of when you're when you're taking photos um, of going back and looking through and hearting the photos that you like. That's another thing. That's another really great trick. Both Androids and Apple allow you to option of favoriting a photo. Use that option. Yeah. Favorite the yeah. photo that you like. So then that way you can go back and find it easily in your favorites. That's cool. Thank you for that tip. And funny, I was laughing because <laughs> I found a lot of like my, you know, my son learned how to, you know, do a selfie. Uh -huh. And he's taking <laughs> pictures of his nose, his nose or whatever. It's a lot of his, his nose, right? It's a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> because they hold the phone like this because it's yeah. kind of like. It's a little bit heavy for a six-year-old and they keep <laughs> clicking it and it's, it's hilarious. Yes, multiple, multiple times. I actually and I love see. those photos. We, we actually end up keeping a lot of that and using it in albums because <laughs> I think it's so sweet. You will laugh forever <laughs> about those photos. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, man. And, you know, are you finding, and you said you started in 2016, are you, are you finding from that time? time on a rise in demand for your services. I'm sure you have. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes, I think, you know, uh, COVID really pushed the needle for professional photo organizers. I think a lot of people decided to clean out their closets and then some, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> um, and, and I know a lot of home organizers who I, you know, work with a lot, um, their businesses were either really slow in the beginning because, you know, a lot of you guys go to people's homes and it's very dangerous in the beginning of the unknown um, but yeah, our business grew uh, exponentially. Um, we actually moved four times in four years. In 2020, we had to look for an office. Everyone else was leaving their office. We had to find an <laughs> office. And then from there, we moved four times. <laughs> Luckily, wow. we're, we're going to be here for a while. So um, that's a good thing. <laughs> I have uh, a, a staff of six. You know, I have a, a an incredible staff that are really passionate about the projects that we work on and they're very technically savvy. Um, and yeah, it's been a, it's been a wonderful journey and I feel really blessed. Wow. Wow. That's great. I'm well, I am so happy to be able to talk with you and get to know you as well as your company. And I think that you are bringing so much so much joy and so much fun into, you know, into families and individuals lives. And so um, the seven, the, the, the seven steps you, you're, you said you were going to be able to include that, right? Like, you know, so that, cause yeah. I know. If they like, go I'm on our website, bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. If they go on our website, picturely.com, dot com slash podcast they're able to sign up and please let me know which, you know, obviously men, mention Grace's name. And um, so, yeah, and then they can get it. They'll get it's automated. Oh, I would love that because I'm sure I can, I can hear them now going, Hey, what are those, what are those seven steps again? Because we, we went a little bit, you know, to like, you know, different directions. And, um, but I'm glad that, you know, to be able to talk with you about all these different things, because, you know, we treasure these, I mean, as you said in your in your story, your mom was able to capture like, you know, these memorabilia to be able to preserve your family history. And gosh, how amazing and invaluable that is, you know, to like, you know, to be able to pass that on to the, you know, to the next generation. And who wouldn't like, you know, I've had my own story of because of family circumstances, I've had to leave a lot of pictures behind. And, you know, that was heartbreaking, you know, and um, your childhood photos, my childhood photos. Yeah, I was able to save, um, you know, some of it, but we had to leave my house like abruptly when I was a like a, a teenager. And so it it was hard. I look back and I'm like, man, but you know, now maybe that's why I have a tendency to, you know, hoard all pictures, but that's a whole, that's a whole nother story. Um, (laughs) but now that I have, you know, I know someone like you, you know, I can easily say, you know what, I want to preserve what's to come, you know, I have a six year old right, and, you know, I want to be right. able to give him that gift of whatever I, I had and, um, you know, put that together so that it, it lives on, you know? So, um, and Holly, I know we talked about it a little bit, like where, where can people find you and in, including your, you know, website, I would love to, um, hear where people can connect with you. Yes. We offer a 20 minute complimentary consult which you can book on our website. Again, that is, I, I'm sure it's going to be in the show notes. Yes. Um, so picturely.com and uh, please follow us on Instagram. We do a lot of really quick snippet, good uh, tips and tricks. And um, we post a lot of really fun project uh, things that we're working on. I'm also on LinkedIn and um, we're also on Facebook. We post on there as well. So, but yeah, I hope to hear from you. I hope that um, I get to learn about your journey as well as your listeners. And uh, yeah, we can go from there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Holly. And you've shared so much and you've shared so many like really, really good tips and, you know, any parting words of wisdom that you can give, you know, the, the community about their photos and their memories and their memorabilia. Yeah, absolutely. 
you know, um, photos can be, uh, you know, triggering, you know, if you have a past and there's people in the photos that may not have treated you well, so it can be triggering. So um, take care of that. Take care of yourself as you're going through your photos. Make sure that you engage a family member that knows your your past or their past. If they're if there's a mom, you know, even though they're elderly, they love 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 to get engaged. Um, we actually enlist the help of many of our clients, aunts and uncles, and they just love it. Um, and in terms of digital, just uh, go through your camera roll, heart the things you love, delete the things you don't need. And and just be cognizant of when you're taking photos of how you're taking it, and um, and yeah, make sure everything's backed up. Make sure everything's backed up. Make sure everything's <laughs> backed up. I can't say that enough. <laughs> and for all of you in the back, make sure everything's backed up. <laughs> Uh, well, before before I uh, before we leave, Holly, I have one last rapid fire question to ask you, and that is, what are you enjoying right now? Ooh, I love the right now. It's spring, you know, um, I know that this is this podcast may live for uh, for many seasons, but it's springtime. I live in Los Angeles, and it seems like everything is in bloom. We've had a bit of a cold spring this year. So um, everything is in blue. It's just so beautiful. All the flowers are everywhere. And so I'm really enjoying being outdoors. I always love being outdoors, no matter the season. But this particular season has been really fun. Yay. <laughs> well, thank you once again. I appreciate you with all of the things that you've shared. And, you know, such a delight to have you on the show. Thank I appreciate you, it. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.